As we cross the threshold into a new year, ask the Lord to give you a new beginning of obedience to Him. It was Christmas Day, 1939, in London, England. King George VI was addressing the British Empire as he did every year at Christmas time. And the people always enjoyed hearing these speeches that had been prepared. In this particular speech, he quoted a beautiful poem that his daughter had recently given to him. Uh, little did he know the impact that it would have. As a matter of fact, the powerful words would continue to be connected to the royal family for decades to come after that. They are actually inscribed on the gates of the chapel at Windsor Castle. And uh, they're profound. Let me read a little of this poem to you, if you don't mind, before I give you our scripture text today, and you'll understand why in just a moment. Here are the words that King George read. And I said to the man who stood at the gate of the year, Give me a light that I may tread safely into the unknown. And he replied, Go out into the darkness and put your hand into the hand of God. That shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. So I went forth. And finding the hand of God, trod gladly into the night. And he led me towards the hills and the breaking of day in the lone east. So heart, be still. What need our little life, our human life, to know if God hath any comprehension? In all the dizzy strife of things both high and low, God hideth his intention. God knows. His will is best. The stretch of years which wind ahead so dim to our imperfect vision are clear to God. Our fears are premature. In Him all time hath full provision. Then rest, until God moves to lift the veil from our impatient eyes, when as the sweeter features of life's stern face we hail, fair beyond all surmise, God's thought around His creatures our mind shall fill. The words are now known as At the Gate of the New Year. and They were written by a lady named Minnie Louise Harkins, but her original title was not At the Gate of the New Year. Her original title was much better. Her title was God Knows. I love that thought, don't you? God Knows. There's so many things I don't know. I don't know what this year will hold. I don't know what the future holds. To be honest with you, I'm glad I don't. I don't have the grace to deal with all of that, nor do you. We think we'd like to know the future, but you couldn't handle it if you knew the future. But aren't you glad God knows the future? God knows. And as we stand at the gate of a new year, as we embark on a brand new year that God has graciously given us to live in, I want to remind you today that God knows. And when you get in the middle of something and you say, I had no idea this was coming, you remember something, God knows knows. Our scripture text today is Isaiah chapter 43, where the Bible says, But now, thus saith the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name, thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee, and through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee, When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned, neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God, the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior. I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Seba for thee. Since thou wast precious in my sight, thou hast been honorable, and I have loved thee. Therefore will I give men for thee, and people for thy life. Fear not, for I am with thee. I will bring thy seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, Give up, and to the south, Keep not back. Bring my sons from far and my daughters from the ends of the earth, even every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Now without a doubt, God is speaking to the nation of Israel, and there's a beautiful prophetic message in this concerning their eventual deliverance and their redemption from captivity and what God has planned for them. 
But may I make a very personal and practical application today? God created you. He formed you. God knows you better than you know you. He has every hair on your head numbered. He knows the end from the beginning of your life. He's the creator. Not only that, He's the redeemer. He says, I've redeemed thee. I've called thee by my name. Thou art mine. Aren't you glad that not only does He belong to you, you belong to Him? God knows. God has you in His heart. And He lives in your heart. But Here's the wonderful verse as we stand at the gate of the new year. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither shall the flame kindle upon thee. There's several wonderful truths here. Number one, you're going through. He says, you're passing through the waters. You're passing through the fire. You're passing through the rivers. Three times he uses that word. You know, what we want, we want God to deliver us from. But many times God delights in delivering us through. And whatever you are going to face this year, God's going to bring you through that. He may lead you into something, but He's going to lead you through it. And not only that, He says, I'm going to be with you in it. That's even better. In other words, He's not just sending you into something. He's going with you. Think about the people in Scripture that had to go through the waters. Noah had to go through the waters, but the Lord was with him. And think about those that had to go through the rivers. The children of Israel had to cross the river. Uh, but the Lord was with them. Even Jonah and his disobedience was in the depths of the water. But even there, God was with him. And then, what about this? When you walk through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Oh, let Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah testify. They went into the fire, but there was a fourth man in that fiery furnace, and the form of the fourth was like the Son of God. Oh, my friend, you may go through the fire, but Jesus is still in that fire. He's right there with you. Hebrews chapter 11 says, There were many that quenched the violence of fire. Why? Because the Lord was with them. And so watch, you're coming through it. He's going to be with you in it. But number three, you're not going to be harmed by it. The Bible says you're not going to be overflowed by the water and you're not going to be burned by the fire. Uh, that's, that's supernatural. That's miraculous. That's God's power. In fact, not only are you not going to be hurt by it, you're going to come out better because of it. You're going to be delivered. Now listen to the rest of the words. He said, I'm the Lord thy God. I'm the Holy One of Israel. I'm your Savior. He says in verse 4, you're, You are precious in my sight. I've loved you. And he says and repeats again in verse 5 these beautiful words, Fear not, for I'm with thee. I think this is what Minnie Louise Harkins had in mind when she wrote, God knows. Because she even wrote in her poem that we're not to fear. We can rest. And how can we rest? Not by knowing the future. No, that wouldn't give you any rest at all. That would just trouble you. Now, there is something better than that. It's knowing the God who knows everything. The unknown lies ahead, but God knows. He's there already. He'll be there with us when we arrive. He'll never leave us nor forsake us. And in the words of the poet, that shall be to you better than light and safer than a known way. Ponder those thoughts. It may be darkness, but there's something better than light in the darkness. It's the presence of God. And there may be uncertainty, but there's something safer than a known way, and that is being guided by the God who knows everything. Put your hand in the hand of God today and walk through the gate of the new year in faith that God knows. A new start begins with new life in Jesus Christ. If you don't know Him, our prayer is that you will trust Him today as your personal Savior. If you do know Him, realize that each believer should determine to make this year a new beginning of obedience to God. For more resources on walking with Christ, please visit us online at scottpauley.org. Thank you.